news, everyone. Yes, it is good news. We're back with the SPCC Distance Learning Cool Tool of the Week. I am Jason Thomas, and we're going to jump right in with some more Moodle tips. Last week, if you look at the podcast, we talked about changing just how your course looked, assessing participation and collaboration, and adding videos into Moodle. Segwaying into that, this week, we're going to show you how to embed YouTube directly into Moodle so you don't have to link them to a separate site, using discussion boards, and using groups. Just some basic ideas. So first, this is how to embed a YouTube video directly into your Moodle course. Alright, so in order to save a YouTube video and embed it directly in your Moodle course, so that students don't have to click any links or anything, what you'll want to do first is make sure you're logged into Moodle, and you'll go to YouTube and find the video you want to use. I'm using this relatively awesome video. Um, then, you need to get the code that lets you put it directly into Moodle. And the way to do that is you'll click Share, click Embed, and then it'll give you a code, but what you need to do first is click Use Old Embed Code. That'll give you the code you need. Then, choose the size you want to show up in Moodle. I'm just going to use the default for now, but you can pick any of these, see which one you like best. And you want to take all of this information, all of it, make sure you get all the way from Object up to object and then copy it and I'm going to store this in a notepad document just so I don't lose it now we're done with YouTube now we're gonna go to our Moodle course we're gonna click on turn on editing and I'm just gonna add it right here at the top so what I'm gonna do is click on add resource and I'm going to add a web page. And I'll show you two ways you can do this in a second. So I click on Compose Web Page. I'm going to call this YouTube Video. And now here's what you have to do. You have to click on these little brackets here that say Toggle HTML. And you'll do that in your actual web page. So I click on it. And I go to that code I took. I copy it. And I paste. Now if I want to, I can add a summary, which is where you put your description of the video. And I'm going to click Accept. Now, you look here and you see my YouTube video. So when students click on it, ta-da, the YouTube video is right there in the page. It looks like they're staying in Moodle, so you don't have to send them anywhere else. Alright, so the other way you can do it is to add resource and do it Insert Label. Click the HTML once again, click Paste, click Submit, and now you actually have a YouTube video right on your course homepage. This might be neat to put in in your orientation as like a video orientation to yourself. So they can see your face right off the bat right in your Moodle course. And then maybe a weekend you can hide it so that they don't always have this big old video showing up. So that's it. Next we're going to move on to using discussion boards. Just a couple ideas real quick. Alright, without further ado, this is how you could use a discussion board in your class. This will just be three to four basic ideas you could use aside from the traditional post your response. So for discussion boards, some of the typical uses are for weekly reflection questions where you have them write something. You could have one discussion board at the top of your course where they can just voice their concerns or throw out random questions. And those are pretty typical. So in a discussion board they also house more than just these couple topics. You could use a discussion board for students to post projects or group work and have it peer reviewed. So you could have each student post their project, post their project into the discussion board, and then require students to review and give feedback on at least two of those projects. And then have the student repost their project with those changes made, or their paper, or whatever it is. This can be a neat way to encourage interaction among students, to take a little grading off of you, because students are reviewing each other first, and to just give students better feedback before they're formally assessed on a project or some sort of large assignment. Um, another idea you could have is 
as article review for current events and such things. So you could post an article and have students respond, but not just respond. You could do it that way as their response and have students respond to each other. Also, you could give them roles in how they respond. Uh, there's one technique you can look up, and I can send you a link to it if you'd like. It's called the six hats technique, where you can have students assign them one of six roles, such as the summarizer, the judger, sort of like the devil's advocate, and they have to respond in a certain way to that question, forcing them to think critically about the article and not just regurgitate what they got out of it. So hopefully those couple ideas, there's many more, but just right now this is a quick overview. And now, lastly, we're going to move on to how to use groups in your Moodle course. And last but not least, this is a couple ideas on using groups in courses. This short portion will show you, one, how to set up groups just really quickly, and then how to set up distinct forums for those groups to use, as well as a couple ideas for why you might want to use that. So enjoy. So one feature already in your Moodle is the groups. It's under the administration block, probably on the left in your course if you left it where it was by default. When you click on that, what you can do is you can make groups for your course. So now what I'm going to do is just delete these groups so we can start fresh. Yes. So what you can do is create groups. You can name the group like group one. You can name whatever you want. Give them a little description. Save changes. Then you'll have a group. Then you can click on add or move users. And you can take the people in your course and you can actually add them to that group. And once you've done this, you can go back to your groups, you can create another group, name the group, put in a description forum, and save your changes. And then on this group, when you click on it, you can add other people. And yes, you can overlap users, so if you want users to be in more than one group, you can do that as well. It gives you a lot of flexibility. And what you can do with these groups is you can use them for team projects or even review groups or reading circles. And in these groups, one way you can help them to collaborate is you can create a group forum for them. So you can create forum and you can create a group forum. If you create separate groups, that means each group has their own version of the forum and no other groups can see it. If you set to visible groups, it means that the group members can post there, but everyone can see each other's forums. If you're doing something as teams, you probably want to use separate groups. One, it'll make sure students aren't kind of looking off each other too much. And second, it'll focus the students more on their own group and what they need to do. Um, there's many other reasons for groups, and if it is a need, we can go into that more, but this is just a quick introduction on how to set up a group and how to give them their own forums to work on something collaboratively because collaboration in online courses is very important. Thank you. Alright, thank you so much once again for watching. Here is my contact information like always. I am Jason Thomas, can be found at jthomas at spcc.edu. I am Office MU6B. Phone number is 2905860. See how I'm going out of order here? Very special. And my Skype, once again, is Epic Thomas. Everyone should approve of this podcast. Thank you very much.